Welcome everyone. We'll get started in just a few minutes. Welcome everyone, we'll get started in just a couple more minutes. Hello everyone, welcome to our DocuSign developer webinar, Embedded Signing Focus View. My name is Melissa Marsh from our developer programs marketing team and I'll be moderating and running our backroom logistics today. Next slide, please. I'm here with Stephen Parrish, Senior Manager Engineering, who will be presenting and demoing along with Kalash Agarwal, Senior Product Manager, and Eduardo Silva, uh, Development Support Engineer too who will help answer questions in the Q&A box throughout the session and after the demo when we open up the floor to questions. Next slide, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, before we get started, I have a few quick housekeeping items to go over. You are placed in a listen-only mode and this session is being recorded. You'll receive an email in about a week with a link to the webinar recording along with other resources. Please be sure to use the Q&A button to ask questions at any time. Feel free to ask questions as they occur to you, and we'll answer via the Q&A box or let you know we'll answer them live after the demo. To copy and save your questions and answers, simply right-click on them and copy and save to your desktop or document. Next slide. You should see a quick poll, or actually, I'm sorry, is this webinar right for you? 
Well, this is a webinar for developers. If you're not a developer, you're more than welcome to stay. You can um, simply go to docusign.com slash on demand uh, dash webinar slash docusign dash 101. Um, and uh, that'll be in the chat box in just a minute here. Um, and then next slide. This is our safe harbor notice. So this is uh, just to let you know that all of our values, emails, keys, secrets, tokens, or any other personal information that you might see here today are fictional and um, shown for demo purposes only. They'll be revoked or deleted after the webinar. And now I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll. If you could help us by taking that, um, let us know where you are in your development journey and um, what you might like to see for a future. Thank you. And now, um, I think Kalash, I will turn it over to you. Let's get started. Thanks, Melissa. Hey, all. It's great to be here with you. Um, I know we have people from all across the globe. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you who are joining in here. Uh, we have an exciting agenda for you today. So firstly, we'll start off by looking at the importance of seamless digital experiences in your day-to-day -day workflows. Since most of you are going to be developers here, you probably understand it really, really well. From there, we'll talk about Focused View, this new enhancement that we've created to our embedded signing that allows you to seamlessly integrate a signing experience into your website or application. And from there, we'll then move into the demo, which would be the meat of this webinar. We'll spend most of our time discussing how you can implement Focused View with our major emphasis on implementing Focused View if you already have your embedded signing implementation in place. If you want to learn more about how to implement embedded signing, we have resources uh, listed later in the deck and you can review those after this webinar is over too. And then we'll wrap up with a note on feature compatibility, some of the resources that might be helpful for you after this webinar is done, and then land into Q&A so that you can ask more questions and we can take the opportunity to answer some of the uh, most burning questions live during this webinar that the time we, uh, with, within the time we have together. So with that, I'll move to the first section of our presentation today, which is the importance of seamless digital experiences. So I know most of you work with uh, business teams or uh, product teams that come up with requirements and mention how they need a particular offline flow to now be online. And based on a study from MuleSoft, we actually found out 72% of an organization's customer interactions are now digital. So that's a large surface area of digital experiences. And with the surface area come a lot of really important revenue generating flows. These can be signups, these can be account applications. Uh, all of these transactions end up impacting not just the customer experience, but also your business's bottom line. And so as you focus on these digital experiences, uh, you would have all noticed how any friction with these digital experiences can lead to reduced conversion rate and an impact to your revenue. So again, we have some statistics from different studies that were done, which showcase how, say, a bad web experience can lead 60% of your customers to abandon purchases, or uh, a company's credibility can even be affected by the experience that's presented online. So if you have a digital experience that feels disjointed or clunky because of the different integrations that you have had to rely on, that can not only impact your revenues, but also impact your company's credibility. And so this not just extends to, this doesn't just extend to your generic day-to-day uh, -day B2B, uh, sorry, uh, online flows. It also extends to agreements within your online flows that might be embedded. And that's where DocuSign comes in. So we have heard your feedback. We've been evolving with how customers' preferences have been changing. And today we are introducing Focused View, which allows you to implement embedded signing experiences within your own websites or apps in a seamless native looking manner. 
So this image that you see on the left-hand side is your default signing experience that Do DocuSign generates where you redirect from your own website to a DocuSign screen. And the image on the right represents the focused view experience, which puts the document front and center and allows you to just start signing with a simple button to navigate across fields and then finish signing really quickly. And since this experience is simple, it becomes really easy to embed it into your websites. So today what we'll do is we'll showcase how embed, implementing focus view for embedded signing is not just possible for new implementations, but you can even enhance your existing implementations to present a much more seamless experience with just less, with less than 15 minutes of IT effort. So these two screens that you see on the right are again representations of a fully a seamless experience, which includes uh, your own website, but also includes embedded signing implemented within a page uh, on your own website. So let's look at the demo. We have a few different uh, topics that we'll cover for the demo, and I'll walk you through the uh, structure of our demo today so that you can follow along as I hand over to Stephen to present. So we'll start our demo firstly by looking at DocuSign.js. This is the uh, snippet that we use to securely embed an agreement into your own website. Next, we'll apply Focused View and other UX customizations that come with Focused View, uh, which are powered by DocuSign.js. Third, we'll look at some of the event handlers that are also facilitated by DocuSign.js so that not only can you embed an agreement into your page, but you can also seamlessly trigger actions on the rest of your page based on events happening within the embedded screen. And finally, we'll look at uh, additional features that work with Focused View, one of them being multi-recipient signing. So with that, uh, I'll hand over to my colleague, Stephen Parrish who is the senior manager of engineering working on developing this innovative solution. Uh, and he'll walk you through the demo that we have planned for today. So Steven, up to you. Thank you, Palash. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I will start sharing screen. Uh, yeah, if you are able to, okay, cool. There we go. Okay, awesome. So first off, I have the same demo like, uh, I think flow we'll keep referring back to and jumping back to as we go here. Uh, but yeah, like Flash said, first thing we'll show off is just how to get DocuSign.js into your web page. And the demo we're going to focus on today is largely uh, with an HTML JavaScript plain app. We will talk a little bit more, I think, at the end as far as support for other uh, types of single page or front end applications. But that's this is what we'll, we'll work with today. Uh, so yeah, first step for anyone to bring DocuSign.js into, into their page is to reference our uh, public bundle, which I have a pretty plain HTML page here. Uh, I have just a body, a header, uh, a few cards, uh, which I'll get to on the right-hand side um, that kind of show off existing embedded signing. But uh, here we have js.docusign.com slash bundle.js. Uh, this particular bundle is updated by us uh, when there needs to be a change, but it is also cacheable and we will update as we need to. Um, having this particular uh, bundle allows us to control how the component gets embedded in the page uh, and allows us to automatically add any security sandboxing to the, to the component we need and enforce any uh, content security policy we also want to have over the entire flow. So uh, first step, obviously adding this uh, JS file. Um, I'll kind of walk through how to use that uh, next. So then if you're already using embedded signing, you likely have a way to go get a create recipient URL from, or call the create recipient URL API from our REST API. Uh, I have a function I've exported from our own uh, two files. These are really just internal files uh, as if uh, I'm a customer here where these are how I've implemented in these two, two different ones, I've implemented different interactions with DocuSign. Uh, DocuSign API.js, I have any interactions with uh, with our REST API through cores. And then DocuSign JS init is really where I have any logic that's related to uh, calling our DocuSign JS uh, JavaScript client set API. So uh, yeah, so like I said, like here's this, this function is a global function I've created where we can create and get an envelope session, the create recipient URL is essentially what this calls under the hood, uh, returns your URL, uh, and then 
right now I have this in, like inserting the old iframe, which is like how we're used to doing embedded signing for the most part uh, with DocuSign. I'll pull into this function really quickly just to show what that looks like. Uh, is this, like, like I said, this is what we would have been doing before DocuSign.js. We would have created an iframe on the fly or updated one and set, set a new source, set a height and a width, uh, hide the border as everyone does on an iframe, uh, append it and append it to whatever container we wanted. So I pass in a selector in, in particular here, which is inside this second card that I'll point out on the right-hand side, but uh, it's empty right now. And I'll insert the iframe into here right after we generate the URL to sign. So let me just go ahead and show that before we actually, we were pulling in this bundle, but we're actually not using DocuSign.js just yet. I'm just showing that off and we'll get to actually calling it. So first, like I said, this is just gonna do the old method of inserting the iframe and walk through that a little bit. Yeah, so this is the, I think the embedded signing everyone is pretty used to. Uh, it's by default, doesn't really resize very well. Um, for example, let me pull this to the right and then pull this up on a mobile ash view. Uh, we see that like we have basically two scroll bars now. We have the document itself and the uh, the body of our page, which is fine maybe on desktop, but uh, it gets incredibly clunky on mobile, which is a, is, is a bit of a pain. So that's one pain point that we're trying to solve. And then I'm gonna call out another one really quickly that is also quite noticeable, which is if we go to sign, let's just go to the full signature tag instead of the initial, You'll notice the uh, the adopt your signature uh, modal shows up inside of this box, which really is again kind of a pain, especially on mobile, where we have even less real estate to work with. So if I resize this to a mobile size, I'm working again with two scroll bars, or with a main scroll bar and a modal beneath that, and the call to action is really below the fold. Not ideal, um, and even worse if I we're setting this frame to a shorter height, it might not like you barely have any like room to actually interact with us how you want to. Okay, so enough about, I think, existing uh, frame usage. Let's go to fully implementing DocuSign.js. I'm gonna comment out this old method. I'm gonna replace it with uh, a utility I've written as a, as a customer um, to call the DocuSign.js API, and I'll walk through how that works. So inside this function, uh, after we've loaded that JS bundle, which I'll go back to really quickly to point out, after we've imported this into our HTML, we now have a window variable uh, for DocuSign. On that window variable, we have a load DocuSign function, which allows us to, uh, it returns a promise function, which you can pass a client ID, your integration key to. Uh, I would recommend still like separating like this integration key from any of your standard REST API calls you use. This is really just for tracking and making sure that we, when we go live with an application, we know like the usage of the embedded signing uh, component. So I uh, call this function with a client ID you can separate. Uh, I just have mine in a, in a, in a property. Um, and then this will return a promise, which I'm awaiting. You don't have to await. You could use just the normal promise structure of load DocuSign dot then, and then it'll return DocuSign as an object instead if you wanted to. But for sake of, uh, promises are supported in Chrome in the version I'm running. I can I can do this or await is uh, the support. So, so we have that. We have uh, then a next call to DocuSign dot signing. So one of the reasons that we also have built the library in the way we have is we want there to be multiple components and expansion to multiple components in the future. So while the first component is signing, uh, you could see like there could be a web form component or something else we allow with load DocuSign. So. Uh, here we're calling the signing component in particular to sign an envelope. We'll pass it the URL we created, like I said, from that create recipient URL. Uh, and then we also are going to then set a property for display format focused. So you could actually leave this off and get some other benefits I'll talk about later and still have this old, this previous UI where it's the full blown experience. Uh, or you can switch to focus in this property. So like I said, you can leave this off if you want to, but I think we'll, we'll take a, another step forward at the same time and, and go to focus view. So let me save, that is saved. Make sure this is saved and move to this call. Okay, cool. Let me refresh. 
and without making any other changes, I now have if and focus view. Um, no issues, like really all working. And as soon as that, you can see like a, the, we have a simple nav button now, um, plain footer. The document is resized to fit this screen. Uh, and I'll also resize this again. Um, one of the things we do really well with Focus View now too is the resize is automatic like it has been for mobile for a while. So considering that your component we're gonna render inside of our parent web page is flexible and we need to fit into a smaller space, we try to almost treat this like a mobile experience where we're trying to remove as much uh, from the exterior UI as we can. So like I said, now we have Focus View and that's step one. Uh, like this is like without doing anything else, we have already a working experience. Minimum height is already set. There's none of that. You needed a control on a frame or anything like that. Um, the embedded component has handled that. Cool. And then without making any other changes, I'll go back to the signature like I was showing earlier. So instead, uh, now we have the adopter signature shows over the entire page. So this is one of the big benefits of having uh, the docs.js script to insert our component is we can now, while this is still running in a fan box uh, frame, we can go over the entire page and show these experiences that do need to take up full screen for like drawing your signature, but then still return back to their previous UI automatically. So that happens really smoothly, uh, really like, like seamlessly, I would say, uh, without us having to do anything else. So the uh, you notice actually what there's the, the, the difference here is that's going select style now because now I'm on a on a desktop user agent and not a uh, mobile. So if you were in a mobile user agent, which I was for a second there when I had the resize, uh, it was started with draw because it assumes you have a touch point. And same with uh, the other thing I will call out is the zoom controls only show for uh, a non-touch user as well. So as soon as I open uh, my dev tools, which I have it with dimensions responsive, which puts a mobile user agent, uh, I the zoom control is hot because we don't need them. We can do pinch and, pinch and uh, zoom. So cool. So that's like step one. That's without having uh, any other things like as far as your page to in, like to enhance. One of the other big benefits uh, out of using our component here is we can also have a flexible height. Right now you see this is still fixed, it's fixed to about 400 pixels as we like as we've deemed as required for the document to be easily read. However, uh, if you were to implement a flex layout in your page, where let's say let's say we want these top two headers, new hire setup, direct deposit setup, those two to be fixed, like just use whatever height they are, and then review as well. But then we want the new hire form to actually fill the rest of this space. We can do that. So I'm gonna I'll uncomment to that, and uh, I'll go through the CSS if it's useful as well. Uh, but I refresh and. We immediately already have this to fill the height. Like the docs.js handles this well. I can go ahead and play around with the height on this and it will adjust automatically. So again, this is like a huge benefit for mobile. We don't have the call to action below the fold anymore. Nothing else we had to necessarily do. And here, let me go ahead and in the, I'll just call out all the only things we did here were we set the HTML and body height to 100% just to make, make it fixed. Um, and then, we have doo, 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 this flex card class um, where we're just setting flex one auto. Uh, so basically fill fill the space uh, relative to the other elements that are uh, as level like uh, inside of the container class. The container should be display flex and flex direction column. So cool. Uh, with that, now you see it like the resize and the image re readjust as well. Okay, let me go back to here. So we've done resizing. Next, we can play around with a little bit with the, one of the other big benefits of having this component is being able to brand on the fly. Uh, with previous embedded signing, you could brand uh, from the envelope when you sent the envelope, but then you'd have to previously set up all the different brands you'd want for different scenarios. But what if you wanted to change a primary button color based on like the previous step? Like let's say the direct deposit was, or 
let's say this is a payment and they've set the payment to like 4,000 instead of 1,000. It's beyond a certain threshold. And now you want the branding to be a slightly different color. Like you want it to be red to be a little more to call out a specific thing. Uh, or you just want this branding of this particular embedded scenario to be different than your other scenarios without having to set up an entirely new brand. So inside of the standing component, we have a style object that you can supply branding to on the fly. So even without changing an envelope, changing the, I haven't, I haven't finished this envelope. I haven't done anything to it. I'm just going to refresh it with this new property. And I should get green. Cool. So yeah, I have green for the start signing button. Then I also, if I open up one of these modals, you'll also see the button. It it goes into the any of these the doc modals as well. You can change the text color. So like these try to follow. Um, if you're familiar with like JS, uh, CSS and JS, uh, these follow the same pattern as far as naming goes. So background color is the background of the button, and then uh, color is the text color. Then there's also uh, some specific controls you can put over the embedded signing uh, navigation button. So we can tell it, say we want our call to action instead of to be on the far right, we want it to be on the left. You can also put it in the center. And then you can also control what the text should be when it complete when it's about to be completed. And then you can also control the shape of, the, of it. There is really one option right now, but each pill is, pill is the option we have. So let me put this in complete state to show that this before. So I will adopt the signature. And then, yep, so the default text for focused view is submit. Um, but as soon as I refresh this with the same envelope, I should get continue to review order and it should be on the bottom left. Let me make sure that I missed one. Oh, it, it didn't apply these, I should reapply. Um, oh, <laughs> I forgot to save, my bad. Let's try that one more time. Cool, so let me go through these. You can see this is in pill shape now, and then can continue to review order. Uh, we could change that text if we wanted to to anything we want to, and we also can, because we're in, in JavaScript land, we can determine what language this needs to be in and actually pull the correct translation if we needed to. Uh, you will just end up having to send us the correct, like whichever one you want for the specific scenario. Uh, but right now, we'll take we'll take that string in and and display it. Um, and you see like uh, the zoom buttons move correctly to the right when this happens, and everything else is as expected. Uh, next thing I, I kind of want to jump to. And let's go back to this to walk through, make sure I covered everything I wanted to. Uh, so we showed the responsive, the sizing of component height, the full screen models, branding, submit button, text modification. Cool. So I think that's a good setup of what the UX customization's focus view applies. Next, uh, there's a good number, like one of the other really expandable things with DocuSign.js are the event handlers. Previously with embedded sign, you could listen at the end of ses the session for what happened. Like you knew if they completed, if they declined, uh, but you only knew it after they fully, fully finished. Uh, and we will continue to expand on these, but right now uh, the initial event is, is ready, uh, where we know when the experience is actually ready for interaction versus like there's kind of a gap, like of we've triggered the component to load and it's actually displayed for the user and interactable. You may want to change something that happens. Or maybe like, let's say for an example of, of something that might exist is if we had like when a tab changed, those, those kind of events are what we expect to be uh, in the signing component going forward too. So for example, uh, I will, when the uh, signing on ready is fired, when that event comes through, I'll log, and then I will also trigger a function called form ready, which all I do is change the background of the, of the page. But you could do something else. You could um, hide the previous step in the form, whatever you want to do. So this is just a really simple example for now. So you notice, like, and I'll, I'll run through it one more time just to be sure, but uh, it starts out green even though the experience is still loading, but once it's fully interactable by the user, we switch the background got switched um, right on time. And then let's check. We should have a console event for that as well. 
and which really just has type ready. There's not much in the in the ready event. Um, we this is really a prep for future things that we we want to add for uh, focus two. Awesome. I, so then I would say the next thing I would call out is we have similar to uh, the end event that I did talked about for existing embedded sign. There was always an extra step you had to implement uh, if you didn't have DocuSignJS, where you had to have your own page separate from DocuSign that we'd return to, and then you'd fire an event up through the frame to your parent and tell it like what what happened, uh, did they complete, did they decline, what what happened in the in the UI that they that we want to know about. Uh, so now instead, DocuSignJS applies a session end event so that you can just listen from the client side. You don't have to go. Uh, post or host a static page uh, somewhere on the net, anything like that. Uh, you can just listen for the signing dot on session end. So in this example, uh, when there's uh, when you successfully complete, uh, like these these are still the same keys as the previous one as well. So I'll kind of walk through those really quickly. Like if you're familiar at all with the current create recipient URL, when you reply a return URL, it it, ret it appends event equals as a query param. Uh, with this is the value. So these are the the different scenarios that do exist. Uh, signing complete is the main one that most people are really curious on. It's like, did they successfully complete or did they cancel or decline? Meaning like they clicked finish later. Uh, so real quick, I'll, I'll show what complete looks like. And so for form success, uh, all I have this doing is setting the card to complete. So again, like, it's not, you know, Obviously, in more modern apps, you would have like a Redux store. You'd go update and say like this envelope is complete. Uh, for this quick demo, I am modifying HTML directly, which I don't love, but uh, that's just it's just a quick way to show this off and without too much work. So let me go ahead and this is already ready to complete. So when we do form success, uh, we'll like I said, it'll mark this card as complete. It'll hide this element, and we'll be able to move forward. So cool. So it all through the client side, no extra hosting of the page, um, hid the form, and then uh, updated this card to say your direct deposit and employee ac accounts should not be set up. Uh, I could have changed the color again, I guess, back to green, but I just, this is where, this is where I got with that portion of the demo. Um, and then uh, the other piece I want to show off here is something that we, wanted to get to, like, we wanted to make sure it worked with Focus View or, or like, it's just the numerous advanced features that do exist already in an envelope. So even if uh, you sign with Focus View for the first recipient, let's say, uh, we want to make sure, like, multiple recipients also still work and everything still works as expected. So you can get the normal experience that's really just, like, you may have one signer that signs in Focus View, another signer that signs in standard view, non-embedded, but remote. So in my API call, I have two recipients. I have this one that had all of the tabs that we saw. Um, and then I have another in routing order two uh, that is just remote recipient. Um, and they have a signal, single uh, signature, which has a tab label initial, but that's fine. Um, let me move this a little bit and then we should see, uh, we have a sample email client we can look at here. This is not how they normally display it. This is just because we have a basically a mailinator account here to, to listen for all emails. So even though I signed first as a, uh, a focus view recipient, I get the full experience here um, as, as a remote recipient if needed. So like I don't have any sort of limitations on on the features I can use as the second recipient in any way. I yeah I'll just go ahead and adopt as well. I guess I can select a style. It's fine too. Uh, but yeah, like I said, same same exact experience. Otherwise, um, no no restriction. Cool. Uh, yeah, let me do 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 do. Make sure I've covered all of that. Um, yeah, and I, there's no restrictions on any of the tabs that you interact with as well. So in Focus View, here, I'll go ahead and refresh and we can go ahead and create it. We have a, an envelope uh, we can create again. Just want to refresh. I, yeah, like I said, I have all access to other, other tabs uh, that I might want. 
and this navigation works just the same as we are used to having it have in normal signing. And even if I were to try to decline uh, from a decline uh, tab, that works as expected as well. Yeah, uh, I think that's really the, the full functionality I wanted to, sh to walk through today. Um, Palash, are you ready to talk through a little bit more? Yes. Um, yeah. I can take over the screen now. Yeah, let me end share. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, Steve, thanks for that exceptional demo. Um, can you all see my screen again? Yes, you can. OK, so yeah, this was a really detailed demo that Stephen just presented and shared with us. Uh, we covered a lot of materials. So to recap all of that we covered here, uh, we looked at how you can embed an agreement and then use DocuSign.js uh, to embed this agreement in your page. We looked at applying focused view and applying UX customization so that you can get the experience just right. So it really neatly blends into your uh, website or app. And then third, we had our event handlers that we looked at. And fourth, we saw how a multiple recipient flow can involve participants in which one participant sees focused view, another participant might just receive an email and does not really need to go through your website to look at the experience. And all of those can be orchestrated uh, fully with the flexibility offered by our APIs. So all of this material will be available to all of you using uh, through the recordings that we end up sharing, and that will help with ensuring uh, you have an access to all of this great material that we shared. So as you try out your own exper ex uh, experiments with focused view and you try to implement it, you have enough support uh, with the webinar recording and then also some of the other resources that we offer. So to cover the last section, which is feature compatibility, uh, I'll walk through the different areas of uh, features or categories of features that you would want to consider in your signing experience and what's available today as of January, 2024. So right now, um, a signing experience covers documents. Of course, it covers recipients, the type of signature that's being applied and any authentication or ID verification. Uh, all types of documents and fields can be used with focused view. So there are no restrictions because focused view doesn't really uh, care about the kind of document you're inserting within the experience. It's uh, a UI interface that is just more fine-tuned to blend into your own website. We do have a category of documents called supplemental documents and seamless support for that or the focused view flavor for supplemental documents is coming by April, 2024. So it'll unlock much more range in the kinds of agreement signing experiences you want to create apart from the main signing window with all of the tags within it. Next in the category of recipients, we showcased how multiple recipients can be supported. So that is available with Focus View today. And in terms of signature types, uh, electronic signatures are fully supported, but when it comes to digital signatures, such as standard-based signatures, uh, EU Advanced is coming to, is going to be supported by Focus View by April, 2024. The other kinds of standard-based signatures are not going to be available until then, and we'll keep posting updates on our roadmap as we create our plans for those uh, additional kinds of signatures. Finally, if you want to use SMS authentication powered by DocuSign or email authentication powered by DocuSign or any of the ID verification capabilities, right now, Focused View is unable to support those experiences, in which case you'd still have to implement as per the guidance for implementing signing experiences that use these features. So that means you generate a signing URL redirect from your website uh, to a branded envelope that is created uh, using our APIs. But keep looking out for updates uh, on our release notes and our uh, announcements. And uh, do reach out to us with any other questions you might have even after the webinar. But for now, uh, I'll share some of the resources that we have teed up. So that once this webinar is done, you can look at that. And we'll dive into some live Q&A because we see some really good questions coming in. Okay. 
So in terms of resources, we have these links to our API reference, uh, to the concept of focus view, a video that provides a business facing focus view overview. So if you have business team members or product team members who you'd like to introduce focus view to, you can use this video as a non-technical introduction to focus view. And then we also have some more material on how to request a signature and a blog about how to improve your existing user experiences. And then these are our different ways to reach out to us and get continued support from us. So with that, I'll open it up for Q and A. Uh, Melissa, checking in quickly with you. Did you have any quick comments based on the Q and A that have come up so far? Uh, no, we have a number of great questions. So everyone has done a great job and mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, input with their questions. So. Yeah. I think we can go ahead and start. There are about a half a dozen that are in queue. Mm -hmm. uh, um, let's start with Chad. Is it possible for the signer to mark up the document instead of signing, and then the new version of document is saved back to DocuSign and available for retrieval or submitted back through WebListener? Mm. So as I understand this question, it sounds like uh, the signer is not yet ready for signing. They are really looking to make edits to the, or negotiate the terms of the agreement. And then finally, when the agreement has been fully negotiated, they're able to uh, then sign the agreement and submit back. Uh, with that understanding, uh, Steve, Stephen, do you want to quickly take a stab at answering this? Um, yeah, for this, for this kind of negotiation, you could, you could have that signer in two different like routing orders. Okay. Um, you could have them sign first in the negotiation step, like, and have the corrections happen by an editor uh, recipient type. Um, you could have, like, basically have this signer be routing order one, an editor be routing order two, and then them sign again in focused view in routing order three. That would still have, that that be able to happen. Um, there's a few different workflow ways to happen to handle this, I guess, particularly because then you could you would you would be able to get the web listener as soon as they get to that third that third stage, uh, where they're ready to sign and you could handle it properly. Hey, um, Eduardo, did you want to run down any questions, or um, I can go through and, and pick another one. Um, let's see um. when. Would be maybe about the notarization one? Yeah, we can take that. So yes, notarization again is not supported within focused view today. You can still use the default view uh, to get through your notarization use cases. And then as we work our way towards supporting a focused experience, even for notarization, you'll see those updates from us on release notes and other release announcements. Uh, I think on that same note, there's another question about uh, what we mean around support for authentication and ID verification. Mm. So Aaron asked this question. Yes, Aaron, your understanding is right. Uh, it does mean that the current default view will still support those experiences, of course. So you can still use our APIs, create those experiences where you're able to redirect from your website to the DocuSign URL where there is a way to uh, first get SMS authentication or ID verification, and then finally move to the signing step. Focus view is unable to wrap those initial ID verification and authentication steps to be seamlessly blended into your website today. But again, as we work towards increasing compatibility and based on all of the feedback that we are getting from you, we'll keep you posted. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we have in here. Melissa, anything top of mind for you? Uh, da, da, da. There was one question about hiding the DocuSign loading screen header and footer in DocuSign's embedded view. So as you would have noticed, Focus View does that. It's able to hide the default views header it's able to hide the default use footer and then eliminates any of the gray space around the agreement itself. So you have a much more focused experience where it's just the document with a floating button that allows you to navigate through all of the different tabs. And so it feels like you're just embedding a document into your website uh, and comes across very seamlessly. 
Uh, and I, I'll pick up the one from uh, Scott it says in our e-signature implementation, our internal systems call APIs, we've created the wrap DocuSign APIs, like create recipient view. Um, our internal apps don't call DocuSign directly. They know about DocuSign users, integration keys, accounts, can focus you to be using this approach. Um, as far as I understand that, yes, I, like as long as you have a way from the wrapped API call to return that URL uh, down to the client side, then focus view can can work. We really don't like the uh, DocuSign JS or focus view really only needs that URL to to render. So there's we we don't have to change any of the other authentication methods or any of the other API approaches. Uh, it should be fairly compatible. All right. Um... Hey, Palash, do you want to share the one about um, where IFRA had implemented focus view in the application, but the signature field wasn't visible? Yeah, I, I requested IFRA to share some more details because I think we'll need to learn a little bit more on what's happening uh, in that experience mm -hmm. to be able to provide specific guidance for IFRA's use case. And IFRA, I can go ahead and allow you to talk. So I just asked you to unmute yourself. Um, and if you could expand on that, that would be super helpful. So we can help you. Oh, okay. okay. Go ahead. Um, okay. So I was trying to implement focus view in my application and uh, I've uh, initially I was able to see the um, the signature and the sidebar menus which include all signature field, first name, last name and all the other stuff. Uh, but today um, I was not able to see the um those menu tabs uh, in my focus view so i thought is uh, maybe there's an, any update in the documentation so got it so you have created a document but you did not add a tag to it initially you just sent it for signing and that's when the signer was able to see a side column with all of these different fields in it is that right yeah okay yeah, so uh, with focused view, what we end up doing is if you actually don't have any signature tags on the document, we are working on an enhancement that will help you streamline the experience while maintaining legality. So you won't, a signer will not need to drag and drop fields, but they'll be able to just sign with clicking a button. So that feature is coming up later. Uh, right now, if you do want your signer to actually place a signature tag on the document, we would say you, sh you should use our uh, tagging capabilities that allow you to place a signature field for the signer to sign on the document beforehand so that they don't have to drag and drop. Does that help? Okay, okay, got it. Yeah, so just to show you visually as well uh, for clarity, like you can see these uh, lo-fi visuals that we have here, the signature field has already been added into the document. And even in the demo that uh, Stephen was showcasing today, uh, the document was created with the fields added in, and now Focus View was just rendering that full document. So if a signature is needed to create the most frictionless experience, we recommend tagging the document beforehand. Okay. Do you just updated this? Because uh, initially uh, I was able to see the toolbar in my Focus View. Got it. Uh, is this uh, on demo that you have been working? Is this on the sandbox environment? Yeah, in my application. Yes, yes. Uh, there might be some of those updates that we are pushing out so that even if a, a, a signing experience has been created without a signature tab, the experience can be frictionless and the signer does not have to see any of the toolbars on the side. Uh, so that's the reason why you might be seeing that difference more recently. Okay, okay. Yeah. Great, thank you so much, Efra. I'm gonna go ahead and... Yeah. I see Scott has a, had a question that we answered. So this was around how do we signal to DocuSign that we are running a specific template through it to be auto-tagged? Is it in the file name? So Eduardo had shared this answer. Uh, and here Eduardo had showcased how you can have your template, which has been, uh, 
created or which has been uh, tagged with different recipients and each of these recipients have been defined. Uh, Stephen, do you want to share any additional detail on Eduardo's answer for this question? His answer, I think that's correct. The, the only additional thing is if, I guess it means by auto tagging or also just by um, the other feature being uh, anchor tags. Uh, yeah, anchor tags, where we try to anchor against. We put a tag next to maybe some invisible text or just some to existing text, and we can place it based on a certain position next to it. And for that case, um, if there's just like there's an anchor unit, uh, an anchor, there's a few anchor specific, like prefixed properties you can apply to a tab instead of yeah. position or absolute position. And that that is also a great way. And we have plenty of API demos for that to also solve the same problem. Yeah. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you can look up anchor tags in our support center and developer documentation. And you'll find a lot more detail on how tags can be placed onto the document and if uh, that re relates to your question too. So maybe you don't you want to set up tags in a document on a dynamic basis. That document just needs to contain those anchor tags and will be uh, showcased as a field within the signing experience. So we have separate resources to cover all of those details that are available in our Dev Center documentation. Okay, and then I think that there might be another one. Um, let's see. Did you want to talk about um, the legally binding question that came up, Palash, that you answered? Um, sorry, what was that? It was from Dale. Um, what else does Dr. Oh, yeah. do to make its signings legally binding? Yeah, yeah. So if you are new to e-signatures or, or looking to learn more about legality of e-signatures, I've shared a link which covers uh, DocuSign's official blog post on how we ensure legality of e-signatures in accordance with laws in the US. If you're from a country outside of the US and you're looking for more details, you'll again find resources in our website. Um, at a very high level, the concept behind an e-signature is that it's not just the squiggle or the signature uh, experience that you end up developing and pasting onto the PDF that matters because as Dale pointed out, it can be easily replicated. It's actually all of the additional metadata that we capture and the audit trail that we capture, which is then shared as a certificate of completion, which can showcase all of the different ways in which we have ascertained if someone who is signing the agreement is who they are, and then there's enough records to be compliant with uh, the regulations that say if something is an e-signature or is not an e-signature. So there's, there's a lot more detail and nuance than just the signature tag. And we have it really nicely documented on the uh, website that uh, and the link that I've shared in the uh, Q&A below. And folks too, with all the resources that are shown here today, you'll receive those, um, all the resources along with the recording about a week following the webinar and a follow up email. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, uh, I was Scott had tried anchor tags, but they didn't seem to work. Again, I think we would need to learn a little bit more then. So Scott, do feel free to reach out to us at developers at DocuSign.com and we'd be very happy to look at what sorts of issues might be coming up and how we can help you work with anchor tags and get started. Hey, um, and then Ian says, is focus view available for sender view? I only saw documentation for the recipient view, thanks. Oh yeah, great question, Ian. Uh, so focus view is only available for a recipient view right now because uh, we want to make sure first that the high volume recipients that you have where conversion rates are really important uh, can be really addressed well. Uh, for sender view, if you have a specific use case that you want to share with us, uh, we'd love to get your feedback on that. Again, please write to us on developers at DocuSign and we'd love to learn more about where you're seeing the need for focus view on the sender side and how we can uh, evaluate uh, addressing that need through future releases. Okay. And then we have another question uh, that came in. I am facing an issue in resizing the drop down list width hmm. while placing in the document while signing. Is there any update on this? Hmm. 
could we get a bit more context on which drop-down list we are referring to over here? Uh, sorry to interrupt, Palash. I believe uh, uh, she's mentioning about uh, customizing the embedded view. Mm. Uh, so I believe it should be related to the JS library. I see. I see. That's really uh, At least that's what I understand. Okay. <laughs> that's, thanks for chiming in, Eduardo. Um, Stephen, do you want to? Yes, for the embedded view. Okay. Uh, Stephen, do you want to take this? Um... Yeah, I guess I guess the part I, I'm curious on is is the drop down list a tab? Um, is that what's being referred to here within embedded view? If there's a particular bug there, uh, I'm I'm curious. I I don't uh, <laughs> I don't have a perfect answer at the moment. I know we've we've seen seen things around the drop down list, but I don't I don't recognize this particular issue. Yeah. So. And then, oh, there we go. Um, I asked. If they could go ahead and um, share a little bit more. I un oh, uh, I tried to unmute you. It looked like it did for a moment. Feel free to jump in and, and share a little bit more information if you'd like. Anamali? Yeah, sure. That is fine. I appreciate it. Uh yeah, yeah, go for it. Actually, yeah, I find it for the text box and those kind of components, I'm able to customize it. I mean, mm -hmm. based on the width or based on the text, whatever, I'm going to place it inside that one. But for drop down, it's having some fixed width. So whenever you are placing some of the components nearby, so that time you are facing issues as it has the fixed width over it. Got it. Oh, interesting. Oh. Um, so, you're, so you're saying when you place that tab, it's it's actually taking the width of like the widest item or like the widest like list item within or anything like that. Yeah, just just I will be placing some numbers over that. Let's say mm -hmm. maybe one out one two three like the rough things, but mm -hmm. that time also it is taking the entire width of nearby ten to fifteen characters more. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Sorry, Palash, did you have an answer? Um, yeah, I think uh, this is helpful input for us. So yeah. I don't have an answer right now. We'll definitely go back and check uh, yeah, how we can replicate this bug. And uh, we'll share an update on this through our release notes. Also, feel free to, again, write to us on developers at DocuSign if you'd like to get more direct communication on that once we evaluate. Uh, but this sure. is the feedback for now. Sure, yeah. sure for us. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot, Anamalai. Okay. okay, so I think we have one last question. Um, that'll be the final one for today. You guys had all kinds of great questions. Thank you so much. Um, any ETA when focus view will be available for embedded correction view this year, next year? Uh, not yet, not yet. Our plans are still being discussed. So once we have the roadmap coming out for uh, FY25, you'll probably see more details on that. Uh, but again, feel free to write to us with your specific use case. Any additional details that you can share with us helps us ensure that we prioritize the things that are most important to you uh, and make sure we meet your needs. So looking forward to hearing from all of you who, who are here with specific use cases that you'd like to cover, any other issues you've had. Uh, we want to make sure that as developers, your experience with implementing embedded signing and implementing agreement experiences in your websites and applications is just top notch. Uh, so we love hearing from you. Do write to us. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Well, if we didn't get to your question or you think of something else, you can reach out to us at developers at DocuSign.com, as Palash said, and this team will follow up with you after today's webinar. You can also join one of our upcoming webinars. There's a couple over in the bottom right there. Um, we have Web Forms API coming up on February 20th at 10 a.m. Pacific time, live from Seattle. And then we also have our API office hours where you can ask anything you want about APIs. Um, our next session in Seattle will be February 27th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Um, or you can go to stackoverflow.com and tag, uh, tag us with DocuSign API for a community response. Now, um, we will have a survey coming up after the webinar. We encourage you to take that and tell us 
how we did today and what you'd like to see for upcoming webinars. Now, let's see. Um, finally, I would like to thank Stephen um, for the great demo today and Palash for leading the webinar and helping with all the great questions, both of you as well as Eduardo for helping with all of our API questions today. You guys rocked it. We appreciate it. And we thank all of you for attending and also sharing all of your great questions that will help us. So have a great rest of your day, everyone, and look for our email in about a week with the recording and all the resources you saw here today. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you all.